Hello there! I recently designed the Sancom behind me. Originally I was going to have a full cannon um, to showcase it. Uh, I'll show that later, but it's, it's just not done yet and I don't know when it's going to be. Uh, so I'll just show the, the main concept right now. And the main concept consists of um, actually two important parts. The first part I'm going to call Slime Retraction. So a piston can only move, which is push or pull, uh, 12 blocks. And if you're trying to pull more than 12 blocks, then your piston is just gonna retract without actually pulling anything. So if we have like a large uh, structure here, um, with a slight hint, and we try to pull the piston, then the sand doesn't actually get updated in these new, in these, uh, new versions. So this allows us, like if you, if you, um, if you update the sand, it will fall, but then it will stop. Uh, so this brings us straight next to the next concept that I wanted to show, or the next uh, change that was made in these new versions that allowed the Sandcom design to work. And that is um, sand being updated in a very specific way, so that all the sand turns into an entity at the same time. So you could, uh, you could see that right here, like all the sand stacks and then it all falls at the same time with a little uh, visual glitch, but alright. So what happens is I'm pushing all the sand out and then I'm pushing it all down at the same time yeah, with this uh, little showcase. So here you see as well, all the sand got turned into an, um, an entity in the same tick, where usually it would just do this. You would push it all and then it would start falling from the bottom. There we go. But then when we enable it again, they all turn, uh, they all turn uh, into an entity in the same tick. So that's basically what this thing does. So everything starts falling and then we push it down. So it starts falling, it lands on the piston arm, that retracts again once the blocks above it have turned solid. And then they all get pushed down in the same tick. There is a reason why I need to use this one and I don't just open it or I don't just uh, push everything down like I do here. Uh, but I'll, uh, I will uh, show that in a second. So this right here is a pulse extender. Um, as you see it gets a, uh, a one tick impulse uh, input and then it outputs a very long signal. I could have done this with comparators the way people normally do. I could have done this with like uh, redstone blocks next to the line but I just kind of like how easy this one is to manipulate and how easy it is to uh, get different timings on it. And then here's a 3 second clock. This design with uh, being 12 tall and 16 uh, long, with two towers next to each other. Uh, if I just uh, cook 16 times 12 times 2, that's 384 sand, so that's perfect for 1.18. Also, this little wire right here, that is just a quick pulse. So, it was also possible to just get a signal from here and um, just run it, run it like that. Uh, because we only need one short pulse to close these doors, uh, to close these pistons, uh, to catch everything. Um, but I just, I liked how with this setup it's, it's all like confined in a, in, a, in, a, in a nice space. So, right here I actually have the original design. Um, and this was using uh, pistons that were pushed in and then these observers up here that uh, meant to push them down. So this worked somewhat, uh, but down here there was an issue. I thought that it was all going just fine and everything was turning into an entity at the same time, but the way I tested it was actually wrong and its bottom layer turns into an entity three game ticks before everything else. So. It looks pretty cool, but it does not actually work the way uh, I want it to work. So right here is the cannon that I was working on, um, the one that I actually wanted to release, but this is gonna have to be for later. Uh, it was just gonna be like a, a pretty nice three second uh, instant nuke with an anti-patch added to it. Um, but we'll see how that goes because I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a procrastinator. But this is just to show you an example of how one might uh, implement this into a cannon. So you have sand falling right here, sand falling right here. You can use a conveyor comp, um, which is this concept right here, where everything falls 
and then when this shifts back and forth it actually moves everything uh, into the middle so when these pistons push 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 all the sand is gonna uh, end up in the middle right here and you're gonna be able to shoot it in here but that will probably be in another video if I ever finish this cannon. Another way of using the same concept uh, is right here. Um, quickly gonna disable some stuff and enable some other stuff. But here you can see the sand plate for a very, very fast one. Oh, I fired it twice. But when I fire it once, it all gets, gets pushed in. It all gets pushed down and there's a piston down here that extends for a single tick so that when these push it stays here for just one redstone tick it stays as a as a block right here because if this piston would not be here then some parts would start falling before others because on 1.18.2 there's just the physics are fucking weird i i, I don't like it but this sand plate can work at 0.8 seconds and just push everything into the middle then. Because in the middle there's no interference. Everything can just fall down. There is a lot of lag though. And then if you'd want an example of how this conveyor comp works. Um, well, it looks like I broke basically all of it, but let's see if this still works. So if it still shifts back and forth, then I can give you an example. So yeah, there we go. Because there's a height difference um, going from this side to this side and these shift back and forth, uh, everything actually gets moved right into where we want it to. Um, and it's not like, like you don't need as much booster as you used to need in the old versions. So I'll just fire it once more. There we go. And that's 384 sound. Yeah, I'm still working on this one. This is meant to be a 0.8 sand plate for... Um, well, I'm planning on making a 0.4 cannon, but this is just being annoying. Uh, I'll then use render queue to separate everything. But we'll see, we'll see about that. So, why would anyone want this type of sand comp? Uh, personally, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot more convenient than having 192 or 384 pistons on the side of your, uh, of your sand compression. It's just that no one, no one likes that many pistons. I do have to say that this might not work in the future. Like this, this retraction thing with the sand on top, that is a bug. And we usually rely on bugs for cannoning, for stuff that doesn't really work the way it should, but it does and it helps us. Like if, if it does ever break, I will put it in the title of the video. Um, but for now, for the current versions, this is just fine. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, please use this concept if you want to. Um, I, I think it's useful for many things, especially like anything where you need a lot of sand in one game tick. You can use this stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, leave a like if you're going to use some of this. And uh, see ya. Peace.